Good morning. My name is Roderick Shepard and I'm Principal of Florence High School and I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome each of you all, uh, those of you who are in front of me as well as those of you who might be viewing on Facebook Live to this, our 2021 Florence High School, Florence Freshman Center Black History Program. Our Black History Program this morning is being uh, done so that we can celebrate the achievements and the accomplishments of our nation as a whole. But this month, the month of February, has been set aside as Black History Month. Back in 1926, Carter G. Woodson founded a week called Negro History Week to celebrate the accomplishments of black people in America. In the 1970s, that week was expanded to the month of February. It was already taking place in February because of two individuals whose birthdays were in February that were very important to African American history. That being Abraham Lincoln and that being Frederick Douglass. So, here we are as it relates to today February the 4th, 2021, in a time that is different from any other time that we've ever lived in our lives. It's a time when hopefully we can realize that it's very important that as a people we come together. One of my favorite history, historical figures is Dr. Martin Luther King. A quote that he has says that basically this, if we don't learn to live together as brothers, we will perish together as fools. With that, I want to take the time right now to introduce our speaker of the hour. She's a speaker that a lot of thought went into when we selected her. She's a speaker that has worked with me uh, in Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. She's not a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, but she has worked with me on several projects that we do in the summer trying to reach out to local youth. I heard her speak the first time and I was like, wow, she's got something to say. A couple of weeks ago, I went to a program at the University of North Alabama sponsored by the uh, Black Student Alliance there, and I heard her speak again. I said, our students need to hear that. And so then, it was then that I asked her to speak. Our speaker this morning has her BA degree from Furman College. She has her master's and a PhD in history and African American history and studies uh, from Vanderbilt University. She's an associate professor of history at the University of North Alabama, where she teaches U.S. history and African American studies. She is a published individual who has written a book. Uh, she's been published in the Washington Post on at least three occasions that I can find. I am proud today, Florence High School and Florence Freshman Center, to be able to introduce our speaker for our 2021 Black History Program, Dr. Ansley Curious. Thank you so much, Dr. Shepard, for that introduction and for the invitation today. And I want to thank also Ms. Tiffany Pell for having me. It's great to be with you, and it's a good day for a good day. Dr. Shepard alluded to this a moment ago, but I want to start by acknowledging the times that we are in and the difficulties that we're facing. I know that COVID-19 has disrupted your lives and the lives of your families. We've learned to do school over Zoom. We've had sports seasons, musical performances, and other activities canceled. We've been unable to socialize with friends and to travel. Some of us have felt very anxious and very sad. Some of us have felt unsafe. Some of us have lost loved ones. These are, of course, historical events that you're living through, but you're living through them as young people, and it's hard. On top of this, we've also seen, mostly through our phones and through our screens, evidence of divisions in American life, many of them around race. We've watched footage of police from Neshoba in Minneapolis and Washington, D.C., and thousands of Americans taking to the streets with the Black Lives Matter protests. We have endured a tense election season and then watched in horror as a mob of terrorists tried to subvert our democracy just about a month ago. It's been a lot. So how do we process all of this, especially now, especially in Black History Month? Well, even though I want to acknowledge for you that what we are going through collectively in America is very hard, I also want to assure you that it's not all new. These are difficult days, but they are not the first difficult days. History has some lessons for us about the possibilities for justice, for peace, 
and maybe even for unity. Since 1619, when the first ship of enslaved Africans arrived in the colony of Virginia, then barely a decade old, there have been divisions and disagreements over race. Black people kidnapped and forced into enslavement were oppressed. And yet, they resisted this oppression, insisting on their own humanity and pressing for their own freedoms. We call this the long black freedom struggle. This freedom struggle starts before there even is a United States of America. Racial inequality is older than the idea of America, you see? And so for 400 years, through slavery, through Reconstruction, through Jim Crow, through the Civil Rights Movement, and even into our present, black Americans have fought for themselves and also fought for the idea of America as a place of liberty and justice for all. We see this with the stories of people like Elizabeth Freeman, who petitioned the state of Massachusetts way back in the late 18th century to become free. We see it with Denmark Vesey and Charles DeLon and Nat Turner, who revolted to get out of bondage. We see it with Harriet Tubman, who fought for abolition and helped people flee their slavers. We see it with Frederick Douglass, who escaped from slavery himself and urged Lincoln towards emancipation. We see it with Mandy Burroughs, who organized black women, with W.E.B. Du Bois, who used his intellect to correct the historical and philosophical record. We see it with Ida B. Wells Barnett, who worked tirelessly to end lynchings. We also see this freedom struggle into the 20th century with Rosa Parks, who worked for the NAACP for decades, even before the Montgomery bus boycott. We see it with Ella Baker, who organized the student movement for freedom. Of course, we see it with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, with Shirley Chisholm and Jesse Jackson, and today with Reverend William Barber and Colin Kaepernick. These men and women wanted to be free themselves, but they also wanted America to live up to its promises, to be what it says that it is. These men and women believed that if black people were allowed to be free, were allowed to fully flourish, then everyone would be happier. Everyone would be freer. That's the hope. They envisioned, and we'll hear um, Amanda Gorman reference this scripture, but they envisioned each one under his own vine and fig tree with no one to make him afraid. They had a robust, capacious vision for human flourishing, rooted in scripture and in defiant hope. And yet, there were and are forces in American life opposed to black freedom. White supremacy is still alive and well. It is wily. It's infecting institutions, organizations, ideologies and families, sowing destruction and division and greed. So, this struggle for freedom, this long black freedom struggle, is ongoing, and it involves each of us. It involves you. Young people, of course, have and can make a difference. I don't know if you know this, but a lot of the people who are involved in the Civil Rights Movement were quite young. You've heard of John Lewis? Some of us? Yeah. He's like 17 when he first gets involved in the Civil Rights Movement in Nashville. The first sit-in was a bunch of college students in North Carolina. Even Martin Luther King, at the time of the Montgomery bus boycott, this famous king, he's 26 at that time. He's quite young. It's young people in cities and small towns throughout the nation that put their bodies, their futures on the line to make a new world, to make the beloved community. They don't just sit at home in front of the TV. They want a new world, 
and they educate themselves, and they go to work to get it. One of the most famous of these groups is called SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. This group is called together by Ms. Ella Baker, I mentioned her a second ago, and she brought young people, black and white, together to do grassroots organizing all over. They bound themselves together. They trained and they committed themselves to nonviolent agape love. Now, these young people weren't out on their own. They were listening to their elders. They were listening to Miss Ella Baker. They were borrowing wisdom from uh, Reverend James Lawson. Sometimes they listened to Dr. King, but not always. <laughs> but they're also impatient for a better world. They're impatient for the beloved community. They are willing to suffer and even to die for the cause of freedom. These are the folks on the freedom rides into Alabama, getting beaten up and then taken to, par taken to Parchman Prison. These are the people canvassing the dirt roads of America's Georgia, getting bottles thrown at them. These are the people getting murdered in Mississippi for a freedom project there. They changed the country and faced down racism with unity and love and purpose. Young people, you can make a difference. You can help. And your time is now, the fierce urgency of now. We know that these times are historical. We know it because of COVID and we know it because of what we've seen in the past year. Over the past year, we have heard the unmistakable cries of injustice from George Floyd's anguished sobs for his mom, to the rushed footfall of Ahmaud Arbery, to the cold verdict given to Breonna Taylor. We have heard the thousands of peaceful Americans repeating in unison, no justice, no peace. The blood of our neighbors cries out. We have also in the last year seen unmistakable evidence of white supremacy. We have seen on t-shirts the insignias of Nazis. We have seen a chasm of health and economic outcomes due to COVID. We have seen Confederate flags in the Capitol. We're confronted with a deeply divided country, a country with a beautiful promise but one marred still by slavery and Jim Crow and white supremacist terrorism. A nation no longer able to deny its own history. We are in the struggle now. King, of course, speaks eloquently to this moment. In his 1967 book, and this is interesting, y'all, because this comes towards the end of his ministry, King, of course, will be murdered himself, April 4th, 1968. So this is towards the end. He writes a book called Where Do We Go From Here? And he wrote these words, I think, for us, to us. He says, quote, We are faced now with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. Procrastination is the still the thief of time. Life often leaves us standing bare, naked, and dejected with a lost opportunity. This may well be mankind's last chance to choose between chaos or community. We might yet have a chance. And we know that chaos is all around. Tomorrow is today. We can be too late. As Dr. Shepard said, King also reminds us that we can choose to live together as brothers or perish as fools. But we do have to choose. We do have to choose to live together as brothers or to perish as fools. We do need to choose chaos, or community. There's no middle ground left. Like the Birmingham Minister's King addressed in 1963, we cannot urge patience. 
We cannot say that the push for black freedom is going too fast. We cannot urge calm in the face of oppression. We cannot hide behind unjust laws. We cannot avoid our responsibility with excuses. Some people will say that the movement for black freedom, now 400 years long, is violent. They'll reference looting. Well, they said that before in Chicago and Detroit in 1964. Some will say that this is a movement for socialism or communism. They called Dr. King a communist every day of his ministry. Some will blame all unrest on, quote, outside agitators. I've read that in hundreds of letters sent to Georgia in the 1950s. Some will claim, of course, that the movement doesn't have a permit. That's what they told Fred Shuttlesworth. That's opposition to black freedom. It can look moderate. It can look polite. But that's the opposition. That's white supremacy, or at the very least, excuses for white supremacy. So, in this moment, as with all of history, we are in a historical time where we have to decide. You're either on the side of freedom or not. I hope that you all will commit together to get free together, to seek justice and freedom for all. I hope that y'all will write a letter, make a call, cast a vote when you're able, march, read, educate, organize, volunteer, pray, encourage a friend, and get to work. Get in it. I hope you all will listen to Dr. King's urgent question and choose community and not chaos. We must decide. I'm going to say we. I mean your generation. This is now up to you. Your generation must decide. And you must decide now in the fierce urgency of now. I want to conclude before we get to Elijah's wonderful performance. I want to conclude by quoting a few lines from the wonderful Amanda Gorman, the young 22-year-old black female poet laureate from Los Angeles who spoke at the recent inauguration of Joe Biden. I know some of you recently studied this poem here at Lawrence High School in your English class. I think that Ms. Gorman is speaking to you. Here's what she says. She's so powerful. She just electric currents right through. <laughs> okay. She says, and this is in the context, of course, of COVID. She says, the loss we carry. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always justice. And yet, the dawn is ours. Before we knew it, somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. The work of racial justice, of the long black freedom struggle, of an America that lives up to its creed, that is yet unfinished. We all have to finish it. Let's get started. At this time, we're going to have a selection brought to us by a student from Florence High School. This student is the son of Mr. Milos Winston, history teacher at Florence Freshman Center and vice president of the Florence Education Association, as well as Dr. Rachel Winston, Florence City School Board member and nursing professor at the University of North Alabama, as well as recently appointed assistant to the vice president at the university. At this time, I bring to the mic Mr. Elijah Winston. Hey guys, uh, so before I start, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about uh, the song I'm singing and who wrote it. The song is called A Change Is Gonna Come by Sam Cooke. So Sam Cooke was a singer slash songwriter in the 1950s. And um, this song is in tribute to the people who lost their lives and the people who wanted change in the 1950s when it came to the, when it came to the movement. 
Um, unfortunately, he was assassinated in 1964 on December 11th by a motel manager. And uh, this is in tribute to all of you who lost their lives at that time. have a small token of our appreciation that we want to give her and, and um, I'm going to present this to her right now. Oh, this is so unnecessary. <laughs> oh, you don't know what it is. Don't get all excited. Girl. So, uh, <laughs> at any rate, this is a, a gift card that maybe you can go to McDonald's with. Thank you. And um, we have in here in the bag a couple of Florence uh, Falcon items. We're going to make you an honorary Falcon today. We don't have a key to the city, but we have an honorary t-shirt, uh, a coffee cup, and if I can find it here, a free, a free Florence Metro bell that they gave us for the football games that we're going to give you so that when you come to our football games next year, you can ring the bell. And so we thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you for the message that you brought. And I realized I didn't have my mask on, but I didn't violate the six foot in the 15 minute violation. So we were not close contacts in that brief moment that I just presented for that. 
Lawrence High School Forest Freshman Center students, I want you to hear this from me real quick before we dismiss and go about our normal walk of life as it relates to this day. You all are young people, but you're never too young to make a difference. At the age of 26, Dr. King became the leader of the Civil Rights Movement. Some people might say that that's young. I would definitely say that's young. You all are 14, 15, 16, and 17 years old. In our nation, you can make a difference too. Making a difference starts in your community. I don't think that they thought what they were doing in Montgomery was going to lead into a worldwide movement, but it did. You know, I was reading the newspaper the other day and I saw where Ed and Taylor is taking up toys, and not toys, he's taking up uh, equipment to help young people who might be in the Parks and Recs who might not have the opportunity to have the equipment to be able to play sports at, at the Parks and Recs system. I watch every day where our service learning class here at, the, at Florence High School goes through and they collect our recyclables, make, make, taking care of the world. Small pieces gather together to make the whole of what it takes to be able to make a difference in our world. We all can make a difference and I encourage you all to do so. But I would be missed, remiss as a principal of the high school if I didn't say this right here right now. One of the biggest ways that you can make, the dif make a difference is by making sure that you apply yourself while you have the opportunity while you're in school. Because eventually this world is gonna be yours. Those of us who are in positions right now are gonna turn the keys over to you all to lead. And we need to make sure that you're ready. And that starts with a good quality education. And that starts, of course, by applying yourself today. With that, again, I want to thank Dr. Kiros for sharing with us. Thank you, Mr. Winston, for uh, sharing that song. Thank you all out there in Facebook world. I all a while ago, and I saw people all around the world that are watching this. So we went viral today, y'all. So at any rate, I just want to thank y'all for tuning in. I want to thank the History Club, Ms. Pale and our president of the History Club and our officers of the History Club for what they have done today in terms of organizing this. You all are greatly appreciated, uh, Mr. Flippo. Uh, and just thank you all so much for what you're doing. And I know I get in trouble when you start calling names, but at the same time, I appreciate you. To our sound crew and our field crew who is making this possible to be able to broadcast this, I think Ms. Kilpatrick and I think our uh, field crew and Mr. Jackson for you and the sound booth, thank you as well. And with that, we're going to report now to our second period classes. And once you get there, I'll make an announcement on how we'll adjust the rest of our schedule to go about uh, our day. Thank you all for being here.